Welcome back to another video. We're going to take a look at the difference between the global axis and the local axis. So with the default cube selected, if I will select it, I will press G in order to enable the grab tool. And now I can see that I have the possibility to move this on all the axes. So we see the coordinates on the top left corner on X, Y and Z. If I'm going to press N, this will expand the side panel. I will go over here on N and again if I will press G I will see those coordinates. If I will press Y this will only constrain the movement of the cube on the Y axis. The same will be for X and the same for Z. Now keep in mind that these have been the global axis. If for example I will select the cube and I will rotate it on the Z axis like this. so maybe minus 45 degrees. Now if I will press the G to enable the grab, afterwards press X for the axis, we're gonna see on the top left corner that this will be along the global X, but if I will press X again this will be along the local axis. So you see the difference over here. If I will press Y again this will do the translation on the Y axis, if I will press it again this will be now the local axis. Within Blender, you can also visualize the gizmo within the viewport. You can go over here within the viewport gizmos. We can enable it over here. And we're going to have the possibility to set it to the local axis over here. So underneath object gizmos, you can set that to local. Keep in mind that the same workflow will apply to rotation and to scaling as well. So if you want to visualize, you can do it over here. If, for example, I will now move this on the local Y axis, over here we're going to see how the location for both X and Y have been changed. And also keep in mind that if I will press um, Ctrl A in order to apply, and if I will apply all the transforms for this one, for this box, so Ctrl A, all transforms, we're going to see that everything over here will be again set to zero or the scaling factor will be set to one. And now if I will start grabbing the same cube and move it on the Y axis, both the local and the global axis will now be the same because that has been resetted. And if you want to change that, you will have to, to do it over here. So we can go within, um, for example, the cursor over here. I can go over here for the object, set origin to the center of mass. So that will take the origin to the cube. I can press the comma uh, numpad in order to zoom in on that. And now if you want to change the orientation of this, we will have to, to go over here and uh, we're going to use the object gizmo for the cursor. And afterwards, if you're going to take a look within the view, we're going to have the information regarding the 3D cursor. I will also have this enabled. And we can have that rotated. For example, on the Z-axis, it will be rotated like this. And I can rotate it back to 45 degrees. And now if I will move this on the X-axis, it will move like this. But I can set it over here to be following the cursor and now again we have the possibility to move the cube at an angle. Okay so I hope that you find this video useful. I know that for me as I transitioned from 3ds Max it was a little bit more challenging to get uh, used to Blender especially the, um, the pivot and the transform orientation over here a little bit uh, let's say trickier than within 3ds Max. So if you enjoyed this video, I will position an animation over here on the bottom. Consider to give this video a like. Also consider to subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. So that's it. Thanks for watching.